Hello, welcome to Twitch VR. Today I'm going to be talking about some Velostat build sensors that I built to make these uh, really kick-ass VR gloves. Um, these are based on the design by uh, Lucas from uh, Lucid VR Tech Server, um, and they're really great. Um, so uh, today I, I'm going to answer a question that I've gotten a lot, which is how do I make these Ben sensors? because um, they seem to be performing really well, and I'd like to uh, to, to share. All right, so um, they're really simple. Um, they're based on this stuff called Velostat, which um, you can buy from Adafruit. This is the uh, the exact stuff, Velostat 1361. Um, and basically, this is a conductive plastic sheet, and um, its special property is that if you press on it or if you flex it, the resistance goes down uh, because all the little conductive particles inside the sheet move closer together and allow electrons to flow more easily through it. So basically what you'll need is some Velostat at some kind of reasonable size. You can cut it down from the sheet. Uh, by the way, those are about uh, $4.50 from uh, Adafruit. Um, really easy to get. Um, another thing that you'll need is uh, laminate sheets. Um, these are sometimes called uh, photo pockets. And uh, basically there's two sheets here that are bound on one end. We're actually going to cut these ends off so that we have two individual sheets. And um, you can make an entire glove with just these two sheets. Um, we really don't need very much of it at all. And um, another thing that you're going to need is copper foil tape. And um, this is easy to find on Amazon. Um, it's really thin stuff. It's normally used for making like stained glass windows and, and things like that. Um, but it's conductive and it does exactly what we need. Okay, so to make the bend sensor, basically we just need one half of this uh, laminate sheet. Um, we're going to use it lengthwise like this, and what we're going to do is lay a piece of copper foil and then another one, sandwich the velostat in between, and then pass it through the laminator to uh, to uh, lock it in tight. Um, so I've already cut some sheets of velostat into uh, manageable shape, um, basically somewhere around the length of your finger and um, a little bit wider than the copper tape. Um, you can get pretty close, just as long as the copper tape doesn't touch on either side, then, um, then you've, you've got what you need. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is just cut a couple of pieces of the copper tape. And now we're going to peel the tape back, which is hard to do with my stubby little fingers. And then, oops, try not to let it roll up on itself. And uh, it's okay if it gets a little crinkled because we're going to smooth it out in a moment here. And just sort of apply this adhesive side down to the laminate sheet. Try to line it up with the edge so that you get a nice straight placement. And then we do the same with the second sheet. And just oops, give yourself enough room so that the velostat can go between them without the copper touching. Just like that. And then we take our velostat and uh, pop it in here. Now I like to use a little piece of tape, electrical tape, insulation tape, whatever. And we're just going to make sure that the velostat is lined up over the copper strip nicely and tape in place. And then we're simply going to fold it over so that the other copper strip is in the middle of the sheet and then just kind of uh, bend the laminate so it stays in place. And what I'll do is take these uh, and put them between two sheets of paper to pass them through the laminator 
which keeps the laminator from, from jamming up. Okay, so I'm going to take a couple of sheets of regular copier paper. I'm going to take my Velostat stack and just kind of put them in between the sheets. Doesn't really matter the orientation or anything like that. Just make sure that they're lined up. And then pass them through the laminator. Now, if you don't have a laminator, that's totally fine. You can use a clothes iron. I forgot to turn this thing on. We will pass this through the warmed up laminator. Now, if you don't have a laminator, that's totally fine. You can use a clothes iron set on high heat. Um, you can even just use it uh, be the sandwich between two pieces of paper like this to keep from melting the plastic. Um, but yeah, all you really need to do is set the laminate sheet with heat. So you can see on this one that the copper didn't exactly stay totally straight. I kind of made this one in a hurry. Um, this is totally fine. This will still work great. Um, the main thing that you're really looking for is that the copper on each side is overlapping. Um, because when you bend it, it's going to uh, flex the velostat sheet and put a little bit of pressure compressing those particles, and it changes the resistance through the sheet rather than along it. So if, as long as the copper is overlapping on both sides, it'll work just fine. And you'll get a sense of reading when you bend it. So one thing to note is if you uh, if you are using a laminator like me, you want to check the lamination and make sure that it's actually uh, fully sealed. And really what you're looking for is like these sections here where um, you can tell that the laminate sheet is bound to the velostat itself. Like here we've got some air bubbles. And um, that's pretty fine. These are really easy and cheap to make, so if one stops working, you can you know, quickly make a new one like this and just swap it out. So I like to trim these up into a nice manageable size. And really the size I'm looking for, um, I printed these great little uh, guides that will go on your fingertips. And I'll show you these on the glove in a moment. They go on your fingertips and allow the velostat to sort of slide around and keep from binding. Uh, because uh, what you'll see is that um, you're only going to get high resistance when the velostat is straight. As, as soon as there's any bend at all, the resistance is going to drop precipitously, and you're going to start, uh, you know, that's going to start reading as closing your hand. So um, basically what we're looking to do is make, make sort of like a hinge and a slidable object that that while it bends with your finger, we want it to straighten out properly too. You know, we want it to, to return to this straight shape. So what we're going to do is just sort of try to gauge on our hand where we want the connection to power to be. And I like to put it somewhere, somewhere past my middle knuckle. Um, there's going to be a section here where the wires are soldered on and uh, the wires go off to your hand and then it'll detect the bend on the forefinger. Um, so we'll, what I'll do is try to figure out exactly where I want that, and I'm going to sort of just bend it to uh, make a placement guide there. So now that I've got that bend in the right place, what I'm going to do is separate the layers back to this joint that I've just created. And you'll see that that allows us to access the copper foil again. And uh, I've ripped this, so you really you want to try to avoid ripping the laminate if you can. So I'm just going to trim this off. We don't need too much for the wires to connect to, just a little bit of space to uh, solder onto the copper foil. So you can use whatever tool you need to delaminate up to your hinge. And try not to go past it. And um, 
the reason that I'm doing this, I had tried before to just sort of like bring the copper foil to the outside and solder onto it there. Uh, but the problem is, is that there's still some velostat inside. So any pressure on the joint counts as a flex. You know, it, it drops the resistance if the velostat gets squeezed between these copper sheets. So if I do it this way instead, I can, you know, I've got a contact point here and a contact point on the other side of the velostat here. And if I cut out this piece of velostat in the middle, then there's nothing to put any pressure on. So now I've got, you know, my, it's not really positive and negative. So the, these sensors only work in one direction. This um, lowers the resistance just as much as this does. Um, so leads, basically, I've got two leads now. And, and so, yeah, so what you're going to be left with are two leads on either side without any velostat in between. So, you know, we can squeeze these together and nothing happens. If we squeeze the velostat, then, you know, obviously the resistance drops and that counts as like bending your finger. So what we're looking for in these sensors is a reading somewhere north of like 5,000 ohms. And uh, right now I've got my meter set at 20 kilo ohms, so it's higher than that. Let's see if we can... So yeah, this one came out super duper high. That's really great. Um, what you're going to see is as soon as you bend it, as soon as you put any pressure on it, the resistance is going to drop down. And uh, um, really in the like software, you're going to have a cutoff point where there are higher values that, that, you know, it just like anywhere that's straight, even if there's a little bit of pressure on it, or all of these readings that are higher than like a couple of thousand ohms are all, should, should all be considered neutral straight readings. And then as soon as you bend it at all, you can see that resistance drops below thousand and it's pretty pretty smooth and it returns back to those high values as soon as you let it straighten out all right so of course another critical aspect of this is how the heck do you connect wires to it so that you can wire it into the arduino or esp or whatever you're using and actually read the uh, resistance values so um they're really easy to solder to, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, just cut a couple of lengths of wire here. And strip just a little bit of insulation off the tips. And I like to use a little bit of flux um, just to make things nice and simple. And I'm going to line up one of the wires with one side of the foil. Get a little flux on there. And ideally you'll want to use some like uh, something to hold this in place so that it's a little easier. But uh, it's not too hard to just do on a flat surface. So simply Apply some heat and solder, and it should just sort of spread onto the foil. And just like that, you've got a good connection. Of course, if you simply solder the two sides like this and, you know, put them together, they're going to short on each other. So I uh, just take a small piece of insulation tape and cover the foil on, well, cover the foil on the solder on each side. And uh, I'll do the same on the other side and then uh, kind of trim off all the excess. You can add some wire wrap and shrink it up and you're good to go with the finished sensor. Okay, so previously I mentioned the guide nodes that I'm using on the fingers of the gloves. and. Um, Basically, the purpose of this is allowing the bend sensors to go back to that straight neutral state when your fingers are, you know, just when you've got your hand open. 
and uh, when you close your hand it allows the Velostat sheet to slide around and um, this makes everything really comfortable it doesn't feel like there's any resistance on your hands and um, um, you can see here where I've wire wrapped the end and uh, made the solder connections. I've sort of glued all of this together into a solid unit and that kind of creates a hinge. So the Velostat's, you know, secured here and it's allowed to slide through this node, which means that, you know, when there's no pressure being applied to it, it just kind of jumps back into that straight state and uh, gives you nice smooth readings in both the open state and the closed state. And I'll leave a link to STL files to print these little guides, uh, but really they're just a channel for the Velostat to slide through. You can use whatever whatever your imagination comes up with to, uh, to reproduce this. Thanks and uh, good luck.